please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your many displacements, tangible and intangible blessings, too numerous to measure. Bless the city of Norfolk, bless every citizen who resides within its boundaries, and every city employee who, make, who works to make our city great. Father, bless our mayor, our city manager, and this council as we labor together in the calling of public service. Give us the wisdom to govern fairly and ethically with equality, integrity, compa and compassion, and allow us to represent our city in a spirit of excellence. I pray that you will guide us through these difficult economic times and give us the, the strength and wisdom we need to make the decisions that face us. This we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Burford? Here. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Gwynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to excuse Mr. Riddick, please. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Gwynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Gwynn? Hi, Mr. Frame. Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. Thank you for coming <coughs> tonight. We appreciate you being here. For those of you who do not regularly attend our council sessions, the process that we're going to follow this evening is the first thing we're going to do is take up the public hearings, and there are two of them. To, after, the, after we finish the public hearings, we'll move to the consent agenda. There are a couple matters there. Council is entitled to vote on both of those matters in one vote, actually. We may do it separately. Then we'll move directly to the regular agenda. Uh, we'll vote on all these matters in just the way they are numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of the regular agenda, any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item. That's something that's not on our printed docket. You'll be given that opportunity, but in order to have your name called, you must first have signed a slip of paper, which the clerk has made available okay. in the rear of the, uh, the Council Chambers before the meeting began. Before we get to our uh, the public hearings, though, we do have one ceremonial matter. Mr. Reddick, Jim, will you want to come forward? Jim is the Director of Emergency Preparedness uh, and Response, and we have um, a proclamation here uh, for Norfolk Telecommunicators Week. Jim, I, I'll read it, and we'd love to hear from you. It reads, whereas dedicated public safety telecommunicators, dispatchers, and 9-11 call takers daily serve the citizens of Norfolk by answering their calls for police, fire, and emergency medical services, and by dispatching the appropriate assistance as quickly as possible, and whereas professional telecommunicators work to improve the emergency response capabilities of our communication system through their dedication, hard work, and participation in ongoing training and other programs, whereas these telecommunicators provide a critical service needed by all citizens, whereas these professionals need and deserve the informed support of our community to continually maintain and improve the quality of public safety dispatching services, whereas the City of Norfolk has designated the second week of April as a time to honor and recognize our telecommunicators and the vital contributions they make to the safety and well-being of our citizens. Now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, <coughs> Mayor of the City of Norfolk, to hereby proclaim April the 8th through the 14th, 2012, as Norfolk Telecommunicators Week in the City of Norfolk and urge all citizens to make note of this special week and give due honor to our city's public safety telecommunicators given under my hand this 10th day of April 2012. Jim, let me give this to you, and thank you for bringing this uh, to our attention. It's an important matter for us. Would you like to say a couple words Please, here? Yes. And if I may, I'd like uh, our folks to, to stand up and stand proud for, for this week. Yeah. Mayor, members of council, Mr. Jones. As you may know, the last 12 months, uh, our folks have answered over 267,000 calls for service, uh, requiring assistance from police, fire, and rescue. Uh, each time the phone rings, you never know what you're going to get. There's going to be a variety of issues, mostly stressful, and to put it bluntly, folks aren't having a good day when they're calling 911. Uh, our folks are trained, professional, and they remain calm when others cannot. Uh, we appreciate this recognition for National Telecommunicator Week, but also appreciate the opportunity to report to you that our own Angela Johnson 
who was not only uh, nominated and selected as uh, Telco of the Year internally from her peers, but also through the Association of Public Communicator Officers, the APCO Association, uh, for Telecommunicator of the Year for the, for the state of Virginia. So well, great. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks to all of you for coming down. Certainly appreciate your service. I know people are having a tough day when they call you, but I know you have tough days all the time. So, but but thank you. It's a stressful job. Somebody's got to do it, and you guys are you know good to try. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the ceremonial matters. We'll move directly then to public hearing number one, Mr. Clerk. Public hearing one scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on March 27. To hear comments to vacate a six-foot public pedestrian easement at 235 East Plume Street. Okay. All right, there are, there's no one signed up to address the council in this matter. You can call the roll, please. I have an ordinance vacating a six-foot public pedestrian easement at 235 East Plume Street as shown on the plat entitled plat showing former City Hall Annex building to be sold by City of Norfolk, Virginia to Norfolk Port and Industrial Authority. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing two. Public hearing two scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on March 27, 2012 on the application of Thomas M. Ty for the closing, vacating, and discontinuing of a portion of Bi-County Road between East Little Creek Road and Mason Avenue. All right. Uh, Mr. Pickrell is here as the attorney for the applicant and Tom Ty. Mr. Ty is here as well if any member of the council has any questions. We, I just want to make sure we've worked out any issues with the Civic Leagues in that area because I know we delayed this vote. And uh, the last correspondence I had with the two Civic Leagues were that they were okay with it, knowing what the law allows us to do and what we can't do. And Frank, too, if you can jump in. Yes, sir, we have. Okay. We have a written confirmation from them that they're in agreement with what's proposed. Okay. And you're Mr. Ty, Tom Ty. Yeah. Thank I'm you. sorry. Yes. Frank, you want to add something? Ty is correct, both Civic League and City Letters indicating that they are supporting the closure of my town. Okay. Any other questions? Ready? <clears throat> I call the roll, please. I have an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing a portion of By County Road and authorizing the conveyance to certain of the abutting property owners of any interest the city may have in the underlying fee of said portion of By County Road. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Um, just real quickly, for those of you who have your um, iPads up, and um, if you scroll to page 11, um, where there is an aerial shot of the this area, um, this is a paper street that runs through uh, a large part of the community over there. And I don't know now that we're closing this off and allowing this to happen that if the city would be interested in, um, and it's not like a gem lot where I think you can approach a property owner and ask them if they want to purchase the side because these, it's a fairly large area that you can actually build houses on. And I don't know now if the city would be interested in talking with the civic leagues in that area and seeing whether or not um, there's any interest in trying to sell that as uh, for single family homes, um, the remainder of that. I don't know why, I don't think we have any um, utilities underneath this area. I may, may be incorrect um, with it. But if you look at the aerial, you can see it's a large swath that goes through um, this area. And if there's an opportunity for us to um, sell that now. And Frank, you want to say something? Um, with the street closure, Mr. Ty being the applicant, Mr. Ty will get title to the land that um, abuts his property, the adjoining property owner, and the residential piece, because there is one residential piece on that we get title to the piece of land that would go to them. It is not large enough to create. A separate lot. Oh, no, I'm talking about on the other sides of it. By County Road as a paper street runs through, not the part that he is, but it runs all the way through Correct. Um, the northern part of South Bayview. And it also runs across Little Creek Road over you're, into the, the trailer park area. You're talking about the two blocks that are north right. of this? Right, yeah. And also um, south. I don't. We, we own that. Yeah. So um, if this is never going to be a road now because... <laughs> I would have to defer to Mr. Pishko because before we could sell the land, we would have to close. Right. I, I think right. it's very sensible to evaluate that uh, this portion has uh, two utility easements that we're reserving for. 
But if we don't need it, you're correct that if it could be put to productive use, or in the time. That, that would be very sensible. So Yeah, please not apartments, but uh, single-family homes would be okay. Right. We, we should get it evaluated. Okay, yeah, just an idea with that. So, aye. <clears throat> Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The consent agenda, the two you. matters here. Does any member of council want to have either one of these We're matters part. considered separately? Yeah. I call the roll. Approve the consent agenda, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1. R1 is an ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment on property located at 1907 Colonial Avenue. By 6 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. All right. No one's here uh, to address the council in this matter. You can call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Aye. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? This is the part that's being Aye. Mr. Protegier. Mr. Protegier. I said aye. Oh, did, sorry. didn't hear you. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Dr. Webley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R2. An ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment on property located at 2400 Llewellyn Avenue by 6 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Um, Stacy Wells. Is it Beagle? I'm sorry. It's, are you here to answer questions? Okay. Gia Purcell, then? Yes. <clears throat> Would you like to come on up? Good evening. My name is Gia Purcell, and I reside at 3118 Tidewater Drive, Apartment C. I would like to thank the City Council for your continued service to our city. I know that the work that you do is not always easy and some of the decisions you make can be difficult. We pray that you remain encouraged despite all adversity. I would like the, cons I would like the council to consider approval or reconsider their approval for R2 of this community center <clears throat> to operate as an entertainment establishment. At its beginning, the marketing for the center was dressed as a resource for youths, persons with HIV AIDS, and those struggling with sexual identity. Among the noted reasons that Mr. Suger stated in the Virginia pilot was, I like, and I quote, I like seeing the young people who don't want to hang out in the bars but can still <coughs> socialize. And he also says, this will give us a place where we can meet and feel safe. Well, how is providing alcohol, which is the leading drug in the United States, contribute to the cause of encouraging our youth and to the safety of this self-proclaimed community center? It would seem contradictory for this community center to hold events that would allow consumption of this drug. With Blair Middle School, the Governor School of the Arts, Ghent Elementary, and Maury High School in the immediate vicinity, this will have an, there will be an issue of public safety. Council may need to re-examine this. Is it possible that the organization has deceived the community? And is it possible that city council may not realize the true intent of this property? Could it be that the true motive and result for this property is a nightclub? If the council approves this application, this area particularly will not only morph into seediness and reproach, it will incur additional liabilities resulting in fraud, waste, and abuse, which usually extends to financial losses to taxpayers. Alcohol is not permitted in any community centers within the city of Norfolk. So what makes this community center any different? Should, th should this community center not operate under the same ordinances as the other community centers in the city of Norfolk? Safe place indeed. This center was never for the entire community. Its intent was and is to exclude people. This is a form of segregation. This community center is being groomed to operate as a nightclub. Let us see it for what it really is. For the good of the residents of Park Place and its surrounding neighbors, I exhort the council to reconsider and reject this application, and I pray that righteousness will prevail. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, Mr. Wallace Beagle, would you like to reply to any of that? Please. Mr. Mayor, while she's coming up, um, according to the application, Alcohol is only going to be allowed when there's a special banquet permit. Right. Um, can there, I, I, I've never heard of that, but can there be an explanation from Frank sure. on what that means? That's, that means they don't serve. Right. 
Frank, tell us, tell everybody. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the, the LGBT Center is requesting an entertainment special exception because they do want to be able to have special events at their, their site. Um, we have allowed something similar to this at a couple of other locations where the only, loca the only people who are then able to be responsible for the site when alcohol is being served are one of these authorized entities that, are, that are, is a not-for-profit group or a governmental entity um, that would be there for having a fundraiser of some sort. They need the special exception in order to be able to do it for that purpose. And this is written fairly broadly. I know Councilmember Williams had asked me about this. It has to be written fairly broadly because the LGBT Center can't tell you exactly what days of the week or what times of the day that they may have one of these authorized entities looking at the site. I think this is the third place in the five years that I've been in Norfolk which has sought a special exception for this purpose. Could you tell us what those are, the other ones were? Off the top of my head, I can't. <laughs> uh, the, the Granby Theater at a point in the history of their permit, right. one of them? Yeah, you're right. The Granby Theater is one of them, and I know there's one other one, but I can't. Oh, it's uh, the Selden Arcade is the other one that has oh, these are these. And they, the School of Rock. Thank you. I knew there were three. What is this? What is this place now? It's the LGBT Community Center, and they they do a lot of out, outreach into the community. Basically, what they want to do is just be able to serve alcohol at special events. They're not going to be a bar. They're not going to be open serving alcohol whatever time alcohol is available. It's basically for special events. For example, we were there for a, Barkley and I were there for a Harbor Club, Harbor event, and they were unable to serve wine and beer at that event because there was not a special exception. Everybody was over the legal drinking age. There weren't any children that were there. Um, they've been very responsible neighbors in that community. I mean, they've been there for 15, 20 years or more yeah. and have been very responsible in the community. It's not to allow them to just become a bar or a club, but part of the reason that we had to make it so broad was because, um, you know, you can't say when someone may want to hold an event <coughs> on a Thursday night. It may be on a Wednesday night. It may be on a Saturday night. So it has to be broad so that they have some flexibility, but it's certainly not, from what I understand and from what I've seen at the events that I've attended there, it's not intended to be a bar or a club. It, it's way, first of all, it's way too small. But it's not intended. It's not intended for and, that. And whoever has these events would have to have a banquet permit right. to go. Absolutely. In. So it, you don't go in there and mix a drink and go. I mean, it would be a special. And, and I was also in there and was yeah. very impressed by what they're doing and how they're running it. And uh, I don't foresee any problems with the neighborhood. Uh, yeah. I think, I think they're, obviously there are no promoters allowed. No. Right. No. And they went before the Civic League. They went to Park Place. They spoke to the Civic League. They spoke to the Executive Board of the Civic League. They came back. They answered questions. Um, they've really reached out to the community, but it's it's a it's a good spot. And what they they just want to be able to have social. It's like a socials mm -hmm. and 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 have beer and wine. And they need a special exception in order to be able a to do per that. night per. Banquet right. facility. Right. And, and Dr. Wibley, whether it would not be what we know as third party promoters coming in, that one of these charitable entities could promote their own event. So if the Kiowanis was in there to raise funds for children, they could promote that, but, okay. but not a third party. One okay. of these charitable entities. I think the other thing we agreed to was to limit the attendance at the at the special events to 49 people so that it would be smaller. And then also, we need the special exception permit in order to be able to do youth events that are entertainment in nature. So if there is a disc jockey or something like that for those types of youth events, we need this permit for that component for the youth as well. And the youth events don't have alcohol. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. What are the times for the youth events? I mean, it just depends on when they're scheduled. We I mean, from what to what? What would be? They're not set times. It's whenever somebody and every whenever we schedule them for our programming, but they're not exact times. I mean, we would have everything done for youth events no later than twelve. But our youth have a curfew at eleven. Then that would be fine. But depending on the youth that we're serving, in our mind, youth services go up to twenty-four for the LGBT programming that we do for the CDC grant that we have. But if we had individuals in there under the age of eighteen, we would limit that event to eleven. Absolutely. Frank. 
Is that is that in the application? Or do we need some modification? Because I mean that goes counter uh, to <coughs> our um, curfew. The curfew law would not be affected by this. It would still be an a be <laughs> applicable, just as Ms. Wells uh, Beagle has indicated. The uh, whenever we do a special exception, it provides for the outer limits of when they'd be able to to be operating. So it would not have a separate indication in this the uh, special exception dealing with people that would be impacted by the curfew. But the curfew ordinance would still be applicable. And I, I, and it's my understanding too with curfew law that you can actually be in a facility after 11 o'clock um, or in transport right. to your right. home. That's from work. Yeah. From work? Right. Be with an adult. Yeah, well, then, okay. well then all of our proms in the city violate <laughs> the curfew law. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3, please. R3 is an ordinance accepting with appreciation the donation of $15,000 to the city from the Friends of the Norfolk Public Library <coughs> and appropriating and authorizing the use of the funds to support library services and programs with a preference for the purchase of e-books. Um, I know there's some members here of the Friends of the Public Library. Would anybody like to make any comments or say anything, or would you maybe you could just stand and we could thank you for it? Okay, you want to do it. All right. <coughs> Great. Thank you for just a moment. My name is Elizabeth Woodard, and I'm a co-president for the Friends, and we do have a group here. Then we'd like to say thank you for all of your support in the public library. It is such an exciting time for our library that um, we just wanted to add a little bit of our own support. So if I could get them to stand up, please. Sure. Thank you. Well, thank well, you very much. Thank you. <coughs> now you've also made a significant pledge to the Slover Library as well. So thank you for that. So, okay. Call the Spence with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4. An ordinance accepting with appreciation the donation of $5,100 to the city from the Hampton Roads Community Foundation and appropriating and authorizing the use of the funds to support library services and programs <coughs> with preference for the purchase of additional books, reading, or educational materials at the Pretlow Anchor Branch Library. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5, please. An ordinance granting a downtown development certificate to permit the construction of a passenger rail station at 150 Park Avenue. A six-year vote planning commission recommends approval. Okay, call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Uh, I'm going to vote aye, but I want to thank the administration. I want to thank certainly the manager, but Ron Williams and Frank and, and uh, I don't see Kiefer, but everybody who worked so hard on this project. Uh, I know we got off to a, a questionable start, but I think this design is really an excellent one. I know it has broad community support, so and that's very important here for this thing. So, you know, thanks for listening. Thanks for getting me to listen. You know, so appreciate it. All right, hi. R seven. Six, Mr. President. I'm sorry, six. An ordinance to amend and reordain sections 18.1-2 and dash 10 of the Code of the City of Norfolk, Virginia, 1979, modifying the United States Food and Drug Administration food code so as to permit baked goods prepared in home kitchens subject to state inspection to be offered for public consumption. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7, please. R7 is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption on property located at 100 West 21st Street. By 3-2 vote, Planning Commission recommends denial. Okay, there are 13 folks who have signed up to address the council on this matter. Um, <laughs> what I'll ask you to do is when I call your name, please, if, if you'll come to the podium, Identify, your, identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name and your present home address, 
then we would like you to limit your remarks to three minutes, please. Um, uh, Mr. <coughs> Roman, I know you've signed up to answer questions, but do you have, but let me call you first. Did you hear about the pregnant woman that was stabbed in front of the 7 Eleven across from East Beach? Employee, she was looking at the money bag. Good evening, Mayor Frame and members of City Council. My name is Steve Romine, local attorney, 999 Waterside Drive, Norfolk. I have with me Sandy Judy, Riaz Vazarelli, and Josh Bezos from the company that can answer questions that I may not be able to. Tonight we're asking for two special exceptions um, on the uh, facility at 100 West 21st Street for 24 hours operation and ABC off-premises. This application tonight is an application for a remodeling of an existing commercial building at 100 West 21st Street. 7-Eleven will be a tenant in a portion of the building. I won't uh, repeat the history that's in your report, but I will note in, uh, a letter of support from the Roseland Company with respect to the uh, apartments that are going to be across the street from us supporting this operation. Mr. Snyder will uh, speak to you momentarily. He's been in business at this corner for over 40 years with his family business. Of, of including your package handout one and two, which shows a couple of the surrounding uh, facilities that are there already, the IHOP and the Speedy Muffler, just to give you an idea of what is existing. Um, the parcel is about 12,000 square feet. It's uh, a wig store currently, and it lays within the city's 21st Street overlay district. There is no residential impact. Handout three shows you the distances from the residential area, and this is in a heavy commercial corridor. Uh, the property is zoned C2, and by special exception, we can request that you uh, grant us uh, the 24 hours exception to ABC off-premises. I'm going to be brief. At least six reasons we think this ought to be approved. 7-Eleven will share the building with a long-established business. It will preserve a business that's been uh, uh, operating here for a very long time. Secondly, the proposed improvements will greatly enhance and dramatically improve the corner. In your package attached to the Ghent Business Association approval letter is the final approved uh, plan uh, that was uh, negotiated and approved by the company and the Ghent Business Association. 7-Eleven will spend substantial sums of money constructing the remodel and will uh, include landscaping and state-of-the-art lighting together with uh, um, a bike rack and other significant improvements. These improvements, number three, we believe will be a catalyst for additional improvements in the Ghent Corridor. Fourth, 7-Eleven is a good corporate citizen. It significantly contributes to employment in the Norfolk tax base. Uh, the expected increased retail sales will enhance tax revenue for the city. Uh, fifth, staff supports the project, as noted in this report, consistent with the general plan, the 21st Street overlay in the zoning ordinance, and last, economic development supports the project, as well as the Ghent Business Association. 7-Eleven has worked closely with staff and city leadership uh, to come up with this design you see tonight. We've not been able to win the support of the Ghent Neighborhood League. They're here tonight to speak uh, their thoughts. Uh, we have heard them. Uh, they have some concerns about other operational issues at existing 7-Elevens, and they have also asked us to eliminate single cells. Um, in summation, we have support of Gun Ghent Business Asso Association. We believe this is a significant investment and a substantial enhancement to a visible corner. I'll leave you to look at the package, which has the outline of the uh, new design, and we want to thank the Gent Business Association. Mr. Rabbi, what about the single sales, the sales oh. of single? Okay. The draft that you have single sales. That's what I was going to yeah, the single sales will be prohibited at this store. Right. Uh, but the Ghent Neighborhood League asked us to, to eliminate single sales in all our other stores. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we were unwilling to do that. Yeah, we are clearly. And we are establishing cameras on the side, outside of this store as well as all the other 7-Elevens in the Norfolk area. Right, I apologize you. for running over. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, Suzanne Ott. Susanna Ott, 7-Eleven Colonial Avenue. Thank you for letting um, me come here tonight. Um, I stand here in opposition to the further expansion of 7-Elevens in Ghent. Norfolk, when I think of Norfolk many years ago, it was just not that 
pretty of a city. And Mayor Frame, thanks to your leadership and City Council, I mean, when I think of Norfolk now, I think, Norfolk, you've come a long way, baby, because this city just continues to improve and be so much more attractive to live here and to visit. So I thank you for all your hard work. That's part of the reason I'm here is because people in the past, what I've read in the paper, have been calling 7-Elevens um, luxurious. <coughs> and I really can't imagine any visitor or resident of Norfolk ever concurring with that. Unfortunately, our area, particularly in Ghent, has become oversaturated with 7-Elevens. And unfortunately, 7-Elevens attract a criminal element. And um, the Planning Commission noted when this came before them, the high volume of calls, and they were very concerned about that <coughs> in relation to crime and other incidents occurring at the 7-Elevens. The Department of Justice did a study of convenience store robberies. Convenience stores have the highest rate of workplace homicides, second only to cab drivers. If you put the 7-Eleven there, it is a perfect location for crime. It's in a dead zone at night. There's nothing around there lit up or open. It's by the railroad tracks. It's by empty warehouse buildings. Um, it's around the corner from the Salvation Army site, where you probably are aware several um, shootings, a gun has been found, um, a man was murdered there, and um, you probably are aware of the wall that's there where people prostitute themselves at night. So it, it makes it very convenient for a lot of folks, but not so much the nice families and residents in Ghent. I'm, I'm sorry, I only had five minutes to prepare for this, or I would have prepared better, but just doing a five-minute Google search in our area, I found January 25th, January 7th, two robberies. April 7th, robbery by two men with knives. April 10th, stabbing of the pregnant woman. Um, this doesn't even include, I drove by the beautiful 7-Eleven on Hampton Boulevard, right by ODU, and it is a beautiful 7-Eleven. However, now it's by the, by the black fence in the front, there's a cross dresser, dresser there soliciting themselves. So why do these people pick 7-Elevens? We are one of many neighborhoods fighting expansion of 7-Elevens nationwide. New Haven, Connecticut, in January, Portland's neighborhood called 7-Elevens the blight of the gate of our neighborhood. However, the 7-Eleven in Bay County, um, all the 7-Elevens in Bay County, Michigan, won a prize for the most robbed stores. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hodge. Can you, Thank, you get one other sentence you want to say? But yes. I, I appreciate you giving very serious consideration because I don't believe 7-Elevens attract the kind of residents and visitors that Norfolk would want. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steve Snyder. Uh, good evening. My name is Steve Snyder. Um, I apologize. I'm not a good public speaker, so I'm going to read my thoughts. <clears throat> my wife, Ann, and I are the owner-operators of Gale's Wigs and Things. We are the second generation of the 61-year-old family-owned and family-run business begun by my parents, Sam and Lillian, on Church Street in 1951. In 1974, we moved our business <clears throat> to its present location on the corner of 21st Street and Granby in the Ghent Business District. We've conducted business on 21st Street for 38 years. Our store is housed in a building that is 4,100 square feet. We can easily operate our business in one quarter of that space. In these uncertain economic times, we, like most small businesses, are fighting to stay afloat. Therefore, it is absolutely necessary for us to lease at least one half, if not three quarters of our building to a good credit, long-term commercial tenant in order to supplement the income of our store and to continue to operate our business. In March 2011, we listed our property for lease with Lindsay Bilisali of Harvey Lindsay Commercial Real Estate as our agent. <clears throat> Eventually, 
we received an offer from 7-Eleven Corporation. We signed a lease with them in July 2011. 7-Eleven has agreed to fund the entire construction of their new store and the total remodeling of our building, which is presently an aging 1970s era structure. The design of this new building was done in consultation with the Ghent Business Association and with the City Planning Division. This project has the total support of the Ghent Business Association. The 7-Eleven store will occupy 2,600 square feet of our building. Our business will operate in the remaining 1,500 square feet. The additional revenue stream provided by monthly rent from our tenant 7-Eleven will help us to continue the operation of our 61-year-old family business. This brand new building, new parking lot, and new landscaping will completely revamp our corner of 21st Street. Our store and the 7-Eleven next door will generate increased tax revenues for the city and state through real estate and property taxes, sales tax, payroll tax, etc. For my part, I will not be an absentee landlord because I'll be operating my business next door every working day and only a mile away when I go home at night. We have always run Gales Wigs and Things as a first class operation, and we will continue to do this on our corner with 7 Eleven as our neighbor. Thank you for your consideration of this matter. And I just want to add, uh, we do have a 24-hour uh, IHOP right next to us. Thank you. Mark Perot. This is the Civic League map. One over here, right? It's not easy. Good evening. My name is Mark Perot. My address is 950 Hanover Avenue. The 7-Eleven with a parking lot in front is asking for special use exceptions, privileges you have no obligation to afford. <coughs> a lot has been said or will be said as to why these privileges should or should not be granted. Only one consideration should govern. Does this operation further the city's vision for 21st Street or detract from it? If it detracts from our vision, that should end the matter and the exception should be denied. The city has a long-standing vision for 21st Street that over time it should become a vibrant pedestrian street, which means buildings built up on the sidewalk with surface parking lots either non-existent or out of sight. That is why there is a pedestrian overlay for 21st Street in our zoning code. And it was established with good reason. The street lies on the north side of the historic Ghent District, and the city correctly recognize that a pedestrian-friendly 21st Street would both enhance the quality of life for residents and visitors and further the economic success of the district and the city overall. The most vibrant, livable, and successful urban districts in the nation, from Old Town Alexandria to Georgetown to South Beach to Charleston and Boston's Back Bay, all follow similar principles for protecting and enhancing their character. So should we. The design of this setback 7-Eleven store with parking in front the landowner's personal situation and other matters not relevant to furthering the 21st Street vision should not be determinative. Ad hoc decision making destroys any vision. The simple fact is that if 7-Eleven occupies this site in its current configuration, it will be a very, very long time before the city again has any opportunity to get a business on that strategic corner that conforms to the 21st Street up on the sidewalk vision. If you deny these exceptions, the future is uncertain, but there is the possibility you'll have another opportunity to shape that street in our vision. There must be consistency and patience of a vision to be, to be realized. I am increasingly worried about Norfolk's future as it sputters from one planning issue to another. A drive through Chick-fil-A on Monticello, which could over time become a great street if we established and enforced a pedestrian overlay there, drive through Taco Bell and Dunkin' Donuts on Hampton Boulevard at what should become an impressive gateway to ODU and a pleasing connector between Ghent and Larchmont and ODU and talk about more demolition of historic buildings downtown. There is another aspect to this too. By our success in the past in creating improved neighborhoods and districts, we invite exploitation of that success by businesses which, to, which, with which, which wish to profit from that success without contributing to the character that created it. A 7-Eleven will take business from businesses that have contributed to our urban fabric while giving little back. 
this, this, these special exceptions should be denied, and I ask you to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Riaz Vazarelli. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Um, I represent, I'm a market manager for 7-Eleven corporate stores. Uh, we operate business in the city of Norfolk, Portsmouth, uh, and other cities. Um, we have met with the Gantt Business League, uh, Neighborhood League, and had a discussion with them as far as improvement of our current properties. We have made efforts to whatever they wanted to get accomplished. We have worked in that direction. For example, you know, uh, no posters in the front window to give it a clear look. We've been doing that at their request. Uh, there were some landscape issues that we have taken care of of removing. There's a couple of stores that we still need to re take care of and re do new planning for. Uh, they had some other trees, et cetera, in the current stores where they had issues with, <coughs> excuse me, issues with. We have gotten, gotten that removed. As far as the new store is concerned, uh, if it wasn't a viable option for, for us as a company, we wouldn't be going on that corner, wouldn't be wanting that site. Uh, along those lines, uh, given the request of the regulations, we are not going to be selling single cell alcohol in that particular store, uh, complying with the regulation uh, that we have. It's going to have no outside fixtures of ice machines, et cetera, because I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the design. It's a, it's a great design. Uh, and with all due respect to Mr. Mark Perot's comments as far as the corner is concerned, if we don't go in there and, you know, maybe there will be somebody else going in there down the road if it gets denied. But the question is, look at the corner where it exists today with all due respect to Mr. Snyder's property and what we are proposing as a company to invest in the property and improve the, improve the corner. So it's going to have the state-of-the-art security cameras, not only that store, this is as of last month. The company has approved DVR systems, uh, high-tech security cameras throughout every single 7-Eleven in the city of Norfolk in the state of Virginia. So that's already underway. Now, is it going to come to all the stores in Gantt in the next month? Probably not. Will it get here before the year end? Probably yes. As far as the news location is <coughs> concerned, it's going to have the state-of-the-art security cameras if security is a concern. As far as the incidents that was brought up earlier that, you know, I don't think we attract crime as a retailer, okay? We have 900 to 1,000 guests who come, frequent our business. We meet their needs, and that's why we're in existence for business. We meet their needs. So as far as the crime in ca is concerned, it is unfortunate. There are elements that take place in every business. You know, those are just the risks there are. So I want to make sure that the city council would, I would appreciate their involvement in, as far as looking at the, and reviewing the data, what we have currently as far as the crime statistics are concerned. So, well, can I ask one question? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, sir, if I could. Um, I noticed that in the rendering that was produced by yes, Mr. Romine today, the current um, wigs and things sign would be gone. Am I correct? <laughs> the la latest one, that's correct. And uh, it looks like under the latest drawing, the, uh, I hate to say it, Mr. Snyder, but the tacky wig will be gone from the facade? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing I, I you know. Wait, wait a minute. That was. That's historic. <laughs> it's, it's historic and we have to preserve it. Huh? Yes, and I think. Art, I don't think that's what you're talking that about. That <laughs> historic. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's a, a very uh, viable improvement to the current side there is, sir. I just want to make sure that the sign was gone. And I'm just curious about the wig. Uh, all right. Thank you. <laughs> Irene O'Brien. Uh, thank you for allowing me to come and speak before you and, and everybody. Um, my name is Irene O'Brien. I live on Brandon Avenue right behind the 7-Eleven on Collie, right across from Blair Middle School. Um, one thing before I talk about my points, I do want to say the wig, I actually liked it because it added some fun character. <laughs> so, but anyways, um, you know, we are <coughs> here for two reasons, and that's because they have to have a you know, special exception to allow alcohol sales and, 20, and be open for 24-hour retail. 
The fact of the matter is, currently within Ghent, we have five stores, including Ghent and West Ghent. Our needs are served sufficiently to get alcohol and 24-hour sales, alone with 7-Eleven. And there are others who are open 24 hours and, you know, provide alcohol sales. <coughs> you know, the, we're saturated. We're fine. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, over the years, 7-Eleven has not been a good neighbor to our community. We have had problems, and it's unfair and unfortunate that it took them wanting to open up an additional store in our community for them to actually act upon something. So right now they're acting upon it. What's going to happen once they get the store in? Are we going to see them actually do something like, let's say, the landscaping that was promised that would be done six months ago that, you know, I guess still being planned on? The cameras, it's a corporate, you know, thing that they're doing, a blanketing across the state. It's not because of Ghent. It's something that they're doing all over. We don't know if they can pull those cameras at any time at their decision. So we may never see those cameras. There is a safety concern. There is a crime element. And I know some people say, oh, it's not. That's just how it is. I live at that store. I've had, I've been pretty much pushed up against the wall on a Sunday, you know, 1 o'clock in the afternoon from somebody panhandling me and me refusing. I don't have that problem at Harris Teeter, Gene Walters, Rite Aid, Eckerd, or any of the other stores. Never had that problem. I do repeatedly have that problem at 7-Eleven. Um, one of the other things is, is that with that current location, we're very concerned about the traffic. You know, we think that all, you know, later we're going to be back here in a year saying we need help. It's a big traffic issue. There's going to be a lot of people going in and out. Um, also, I also ask that you as a city support what the Planning Commission, you know, they denied this and we ask that you support that. And also, lastly, I would like to mention that the posters that were originally moved from the windows was not due to, you know, compromising with us. It was to us to pointing out to 7-Eleven that there is a 50% transparency ordinance on their stores and that those were covering up those 50% transparency. And they were also covering up safety concerns. Um, you know, sometimes I just hope that you think that it's not about the bottom line, getting tax revenue, but it's about the community and supporting the community and what's best for the community. So thank you very much. Thank you. Larry Littman. My name's Larry Littman. I live at uh, 1018 Colonial Meadows Way, Virginia Beach, Virginia. But I am an old Gimp boy. Uh, you know, I came here to speak on Steve's behalf, but now that I find out he's given the wig up, I might switch sides because <laughs> I like that wig also. But anyway, uh, just a few things that I made, I made note of here, uh, which have been reiterated, employing the citizens, tax revenue for the city, improvement of the property, really your greatest security is well-lighted, well-visited area, which will be much better than it is now. Uh, I also believe in allowing a, a small businessman to, you know, sort of decide what he wants to do with his business and his life and his property. And when I ride by 7-Eleven, I don't see what some people see. I see kids getting Slurpees. I see parents getting a cup of coffee or a newspaper. That's what I see. And I think they've taken the place of the mom and pop store. I go to my 7-Eleven, I know the guy behind the counter, he knows me. So I don't see any negatives in the situation whatsoever. And that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Walter Ott. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I have uh, some pictures I'd like to sure you can give them right down here. Thank you. Um, my name's Walter Ott. I'm a resident of 7-Eleven Colonial Avenue, a couple blocks away from uh, several of the 7-Eleven stores. I am a uh, retired Naval officer Excuse and a resident of Ghent. I'm sorry, Mr. Ott. I apologize. Your wife, I didn't get the address. What address? 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. You live at the 7-Eleven? No. 7-Eleven no. <laughs> Colonial Avenue. 
Seven Eleven is the address. That's not Seven Eleven. Seven Hundred Eleven. I was trying to figure that out. No, it was tricky. I thought so too. I had to okay. it off. I have to read. I say, what are you complaining about? Yeah. <laughs> no, our house is re reputable. <laughs> Thank you for for clarifying that. Uh, I'm a retired naval officer and a resident of Ghent since 1994. Uh, Norfolk has as its objective the goal of safe and growing neighborhoods. You recently hired a retiring naval officer to attack, attract retiring <laughs> and retired military to Norfolk and its neighborhoods. I can tell you what does not attract <laughs> professionals and retiring military to Norfolk. It is crime and unsafe neighborhoods. 7-Elevens, unfortunately, are not good neighborhoods, are not good neighbors, and unfortunately, are magnets for crime and heavy traffic <coughs> of behavior. The previous speaker, who is not a resident of Norfolk, I'd like to point out, talked about 7-Elevens being a positive aspect. He doesn't live in Norfolk and doesn't see what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. As neighbors, we have asked 7-Eleven to stop single sales of alcohol in the neighborhood. They have declined. In addition, we have asked 7-Eleven management, who is here today, to address the loitering. It is still ongoing, as shown by the pictures that I've, I've passed to you. Ghent attracts renters, homeowners, and families due to its walking-friendly nature and the unique shops and restaurants that you cannot find anywhere else in the Hampton Roads area. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you cannot walk past the corner of Princess Anne and Colonial Avenue, the 7-Eleven there, and go to either Sacred Heart Church or Harris Teeter or past the 7-Eleven without even either being verbally or physically approached or harassed by the vagrants who loiter at 7-Eleven and that corner. This behavior happens on a day-to-day -day basis and has been observed by my family and numerous friends. My entire family has personally been harassed and threatened. And in fact, one of the, uh, the pictures shows the gentleman that when I was taking the picture, he threatened me. Within one to two blocks of the location that they're proposing, you have a high school, an elementary school, and a daycare center. One of the other issues with 7-Eleven is the trash generated by the 7-Eleven, whether it's alcohol bottles, food containers, or wrappers. They're thrown throughout the neighborhood. I live five blocks away from 7-Eleven, and every week I'm either picking up beer bottles or food containers from the 7-Eleven. Thank you for your consideration, and I'm asking for your support in uh, supporting what the Ghent Civic League and also the Planning Commission uh, asked, and that's to not allow the 7-Eleven within our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Elliot Jurin. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Elliot Jordan, 144 West Belvedere Road, and uh, I apologize, I'm going to reiterate some of the things that have already been said, but at least I'll say it quickly. I'm here to support the Snyder family in their effort to rent a portion of their property at 7-Eleven. <clears throat> I'm disappointed that this location has been so contested. Unlike other 7-Elevens and more residential locations, such as Graydon Avenue and Princess Anne Road, this spot is strictly commercial, verging on industrial. The closest neighbors are the 24-hour IHOP, speedy car repair across the street, Mystic Tattoo, and the Coke plant on Monticello. The closest res residences are the condos in the former Sears building a block away. I've heard it said the neighborhood doesn't need another 7-Eleven. Well, it seems that 7-Eleven is willing to commit a substantial amount of money in the belief that it does. I vividly recall the controversy surrounding the arrival of Walgreens to 21st Street some years ago. I would venture to say that some of the most vocal opponents then are some of their most loyal customers now. What's more, since then, residents and landlords alike have welcomed such national names as Rite Aid, Cold Stone Creamery, Total Wine, Two Starbucks, Chipotle Grill, Dollar Tree, and lots more. While I've always been a strong advocate of locally owned and operated businesses in Ghent, I'm also aware of the demands the current economic environment has put on them. To me, this project is less about a new 7-Eleven than it is about helping to sustain a local family business that's been in Norfolk for 61 years. The fact that the landlords will continue to occupy the location 
should serve to allay any fears regarding the new tenants. For three generations, the Snyders have operated precisely the type of <coughs> distinctive specialty shop that helped shape and sustain the Gate neighborhood, the Ghent neighborhood we all love today. Approving this application, I believe, will be a great step in helping to assure they continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Alice Grimes. My name is Alice Ward Allen Grimes. I'm here on behalf of the Norfolk Preservation Alliance. We would ask that you deny the request for the special exception for the 7-Eleven because it is not in keeping with the 21st Street pedestrian overlay vision. It is not in keeping with the Ghent historic neighborhood or the character of the community of, of both Ghent and Park Place. As stated, there are numerous 7-Elevens, one in West Ghent, two in Ghent, one at Hampton at Park Place, another one at Park Place and Colonial. There's enough 7-Elevens. Um, obviously, they can make a business there. They wouldn't be coming, but that doesn't mean that it's a real need for the community. The, the owner of the current building does not have to lease out part of his building to sustain his business. If he needs to, he can find another more appropriate and attractive occupant. We should look ahead. Times are difficult, but eventually that business will not be there. Um, if they've got more space in the <coughs> then perhaps they can move to a smaller building and something else could go on that corner that's appropriate and in keeping with the pedestrian overlay. Um, I've never set foot in that Walgreens, and I never will, because we have enough drug stores, and we lost part of our historic character when that building went into place. We're going to gradually erode the 21st Street corridor if we add another 7-Eleven there. In time, something can be brought to that corner that's appropriate, and we would ask that you deny the special exception. Thank you. Uh, Marie Snyder. Good evening. My name is Marie Snyder. I reside at 817 Mowbray Arch. Um, I am Steve and Ann Snyder's daughter. Um, first, I would like to note that I am a co-owner of Kitch, a small business located on Shirley Avenue. I also hold a degree in historic preservation, so I am well aware of the importance of supporting small businesses and maintaining a sense of place to ensure the vitality and livability of a community. I've worked at Gales Wigs and Things throughout my life, and I know firsthand the challenges of maintaining this niche business. Since 1951, my family has put forth their best effort to provide the Hampton Roads area with wigs and hats. They would like to continue to do so on the property that they own, but they cannot ignore the decreased cash flow and the very costly but much needed renovations. After years of considering their options, they finally came across a tenant that is willing to rent a space from them and pay for all the renovations to the building. This sort of opportunity is rare, therefore both parties have tried extremely hard over the past few months to accommodate the needs of the community so they may follow through with their plan. As you all can see from the pictures, the addition of the proposed 7-Eleven will drastically improve the streetscape. In addition, it will provide a nice amenity for those that live in the surrounding area. I know my parents will do their best to help make this 7-Eleven one that peacefully coexists with the Ghent community. In closing, I ask that you all consider his plan with open minds as it is his property and livelihood. Thank you. Thank you. Johnny Blake. Mr. Blake. My name is Johnny Blake. I live on Brandon Avenue. Uh, thank you for hearing me. My comments are, I don't feel we need another 7-Eleven. Um, for one, I grew up in Portsmouth. I was surrounded by them. They do bring the bad element around. Um, I believe they have a shoddy upkeep. They are a corporate entity, from what I understand. The ones that they have here now that are corporate owned are to be sold as a franchise. I feel that when the trucks come in, they will disturb traffic. So for me, I just don't feel that we need it. I mean, that's about all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Henry Condi. <coughs> There's the opposite. If they're not corporately owned, they're trying to corporately. Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, Mayor Frame and uh, Council. <coughs> uh, my name is Henry Condi. I'm president of the Gantt Civic League. 
um, 300 Colonial Avenue. Uh, we started down this road back in the fall, and the more I researched this, the more it's become a cautionary tale. Uh, I sent the letter, and I believe everybody's received, so I'm not going to repeat those the facts, but there's been a lot of facts that have not been mentioned thus far. I support the small businesses, because we know that those dollars spent in a small business generate about 250. And Mr. Snyder, the point that what hasn't been made is that according to Mr. Snyder himself to the Ghent Neighborhood League, he had two offers that he turned down, which he leapfrogged to the third offer for the 7-Eleven. Doing the research, we have, we had in the fall when we started the discussion, six 7-Elevens. Over the holidays, number seven stood up. This is for number eight. I would ask if you were to prove this, what's the final number inside of mile radius? And I'm using the center of Princess Anne and Colonial. What's the final number? Is it nine? Is it 10? Is it 11? That's my question. We talk about neighbors building neighborhoods. If any of you would be starting your neighborhood from scratch, would you build your neighborhood with eight 7-Elevens? Probably the answer is no. There's been discussion that it won't be any impact to the community. Staff report has 930 vehicles per day. On 21st Street, which is already pretty well attended. <clears throat> the pedestrian overlay has already been addressed. The issue of the GBA, they were in opposition early on. But please do not give the GBA and the GNL the same weight. The GBA, their issues were entirely aesthetic. Our issues go several levels deep as far as the impact to the community. Impact to the community, it says that, no, this is commercial, so on and so forth. Here's the reality. Last year, I had to request a four-way stop on 20th Street in Mantua because people don't want to deal with 20, 21st Street. So they're going, coming to 20 and they're using 20th and now they're using Shirley and Princess Anne. <coughs> Convenience. Well, if you already have seven within a mile radius, that's 20 minute walking distance. If you extrapolate 54 square miles times eight, that's 432 for Norfolk. So here's what's happened. The cautionary tale here is <coughs> um, that uh, I have reviewed, the, by the way, I, I may be the last, maybe not, but I asked for a couple extra minutes. I've done a lot of research on this, more than I really care to have spent on it. But right now, Norfolk has the dubious distinction of having the most 7-Eleven per square mile. We're approximating <coughs> one per square mile. Our neighbors next door, Virginia Beach, is 4.45, and in Ghent, 8, if this is approved. <coughs> um, Mr. Condi, can you sort of Yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll wrap it up, but uh, here's the bottom line. On the issue of the revenue, the final issue of the revenue, there, you need to look at the revenue stream. Yeah. It's not only about revenue, you need to look at the cost that the 7-Elevens in totality in Norfolk cost as far as police, so on and so forth, let alone the burden on the city. So um, <coughs> the Planning Commission agreed with us. Please listen to the Planning Commission and your neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the list of folks who signed up to speak on this matter. Are there any questions? I have I have one question, and I'm looking at the Business Association endorsement, and it's kind of tepid at best. Um, the single serve issue, which is is a problem, and I live in Gettin. I'm walking or riding or jogging or something. I live in West Gettin, and I know that 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 puts you at a disadvantage if you eliminated all the single serves throughout. But how about the ones in the core of Gettin, Colonial Avenue, Collie Avenue, and Olney Road? to eliminate single server and all those because that's attracting the, that, the bad element to what I call the core of Ghent. The others are kind of on the outskirts. And, I, you know, I love them. Have, 
uh, you know, the uh, I, I hear Mr. Perot and Alice. I don't, I don't think realistically anybody's going to tear down that building, and, and I share your concerns about the ramp on the street, but I don't see that happening in the near future. If it's not 7 Eleven, somebody else in that um, square, though, doesn't need a special exception. But yeah. I would just ask if they would proffer to eliminate single serves in those three stores, which are in the core part of Ghent, and they do have a serious problem. Now, I live in West Ghent, and there's a problem there, and we'll deal with that at a later time. But that's, that's, um, and, and I would ask you, and then I would ask if the Ghent Neighborhood League would, would, would think that might be a reasonable, uh, I know. Yes, Steve. Or I get my coffee. With all due respect, uh, Mr. Wynn, uh, we have discussed that issue probably over the last 120 days several times. It's been run up the, the flagpole, and we don't have the authority at this level to change really what's national corporate policy. Um, I, I, we've said all along that if the city was found a way to eliminate single cells in all those establishments that we'd be well, we happy to comply. We but can't do that in yeah. three. I know they were talking in, in eight. Yeah. Eliminate. I think the issue there is the precedent it sets and where does it stop and what impact and effect does it have across Trying to uh, work a compromise. 296 stores in the, in the Hampton Roads area. So, I, 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 yeah, I understand your concern. And we did look at it very closely. Did, um, did you pare it down to three stores? Court, have, have no authority. I don't have authority to, to agree to that. I'm sorry. I have a question, Paul. May I? Sure. Steve. Yes, sir. Uh, Tommy and I pulled up the uh, Civic League map of the area trying to figure out what Civic League uh, this falls in. And it doesn't fall within any except, I guess, the business association, but it's not a mm -hmm. Civic League. Uh, <clears throat> looking where the Ghent Neighborhood League is, I understand. Did you hear anything from Ghent Square? No, we did not. Did you hear anything from Park Place? No, we did not. Kensington? No, we did not. Villa Heights? No. Lindenwood? No. Old Huntersville? No. And I think letters went out to all the adjacent neighbors as well. Those are all the adjacent? Port. Yeah. Well, frankly, those are all the adjacent right. closest to this particular store uh, that I have seen, and uh, you've heard nothing from those? Correct. Okay. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Okay, are we ready? Call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Paul, can I say something? Sure, absolutely. And, and, and that, Tommy and I just pulled that up um, on that particular issue of the other civic leagues. I think Mr. Condi wants to speak. No, uh, no, no, we, we're, we're finished. Henry. Thank you. <laughs> well, he, they asked, he was asked a specific question, Tom, not, not tonight. No, I'm sorry, Henry. That's out of order. Okay. Well, sorry. and that was in looking at it, we saw that and those are other civic leagues that are within the area. Um, in looking at this particular issue, uh, I did call one of the planning uh, commissioners today, uh, and this is a serious matter. There's no doubt about it, and I think that we've taken it serious. Okay. And, and I called one of the planning commissioners to say, "What happened? Why did you vote against it?" <coughs> Uh, that particular planning commissioner said it was because the, uh, even though they had heard from the neighborhood association, it was the pairing with GBA that was very problematic to them. Uh, that being said, the uh, once he found out that GBA uh, did give the approval with the conditions that were presented, that particular planning commissioner <laughs> said that uh, he would now have voted for it with the changes because of GBA. Uh, again, doing my homework, even though it's not my ward, it is the city, and it's a significant issue that we have to examine and to be fair to all the parties. Um, so that was an important issue today when I made the phone call to him to find <coughs> out what happened. I am curious, if this was called Bob and Jill's Family Market, uh, would it have the same opposition? And everything else remained the same. Uh, I understand that there may be some type of stigma that comes with 7-Eleven, but frankly, and I've said this before, that's the market. Uh, if you don't want it, don't go. Uh, and I'm not saying to can your business, sir, but the bottom line is, is that that really is how you have to look at it. If you're the neighbors there, you're not interested, then just don't go. And that's just how it, that's just how it is. Um, and I, I have to look at it when I make my decision, I have to look at it in that manner. Uh, to come to the right decision. Um, 
I do look at the tax base issue. It does increase the tax base. It does improve the property in the area, even though it may not be with the overlay. And I apologize that I, I, I need to most likely uh, educate myself on that particular overlay. I have not. Uh, but it, it is a vast improvement as to what is there, uh, even if uh, Mr. Snyder's daughter says it dramatically improves the streetscape, uh, then she must have the same idea about the wig as I do. Um, I will also say this, and this is something that is important to consider in, in looking at this. Um, the owner is in the building, and that, that to me plays a huge role in having to come up with why this is an appropriate and why I will vote yes for it. Having the owner in the building is, is a significant ma uh, matter that he'll be there basically on the daily basis. I know he's not there 24 hours a day, but it does make a difference in deciding yes or no in this particular case. I'm gonna also say that the streetscape has changed. Uh, I did spend time here uh, closely examining 21st Street and the new residences that are there. Uh, in particular, the apartments across the street, uh, and in particular, also the apartments that are down Monticello. Uh, um, uh, and I, I think they're Alexander and Ghent, they may be called. Yeah. Uh, the number of individuals that are uh, within walking distance. And frankly, uh, it being convenience, yes, but those individuals may not walk to Monticello Avenue across railroad tracks uh, to buy whatever provisions they are. Uh, whether it's a sandwich, whether it's a, a breakfast burrito, uh, or whether it's a six-pack. Uh, they may not feel comfortable to walk that across railroad tracks to get that or to go the distance uh, as it is uh, up to uh, Colonial. Um, I do, uh, you know, it really is. It, th these decisions don't come lightly. You need, please understand that. And we try to do our homework, right or wrong, uh, but we also in coming to those decisions, I have to go through all these things in my head. Uh, and that being said, please understand why I will vote yes uh, on behalf of this particular issue. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Smeagle. Um, I just think it's interesting that in the last two months, we've probably spent more time talking about 7-Eleven proposals. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I hear a theme here. It's not necessarily just 7-Eleven, but it's a systemic issue with how people utilize services in this from these retail locations. You know, and we we just had a pregnant woman who was stabbed, I guess she was an employee, right across from East Beach and Ocean View, um, our attempted robbery at a 7-Eleven. And I, I don't want to, I'm not trying to paint all the 7-Elevens with the same brush, but, you know, we have restaurants in Ghent that are open till 2 o'clock and sell alcohol, and they might be a reputable restaurant, and, and but you never know who's going to, take it too far at that restaurant and walk out and, you know, cause a problem. Um, I've asked for a uh, presentation on how we look at alcohol sales all throughout the city and the inconsistencies with it in our neighborhoods, and we're going to hopefully get that presentation soon. But they, these issues are, are not just 7-Eleven. Um, you know, I, I apparently didn't somebody set themselves on fire in a grocery store um, in Ghent. Um, you know, down in Ocean View, we're having an issue with panhandlers and people being approached at a farm fresh. You know, uh, we welcome these uh, establishments because they do provide employment. But I think there's a bigger issue here when it comes to a systemic issue and in, in what we're doing in our society. Um, and I don't fault 7-Eleven for that. I don't fault the corporations for this. I think that, um, you know, as a city, we need to look at our policies overall. Um, and, and how we do business with, with all of our retail locations. Um, it is, uh, as Andy and I were discussing this, you know, we do our homework, we talk to people, um, you know, and we heard some of the same complaints from uh, the Broad Creek area, uh, but this is not in a residential area, um, and, and to me this is a, uh, uh, an area for business, and I support Mr. Snyder's attempt to keep his business open. So um, it's, a, it's a private property, and I think that if he wants to move in this direction, that he should be allowed to do that. So I. <clears throat> Dr. Wibley? Um, I'm disappointed that, that some of you, I think, have not been privy, and maybe this is Barclay and my fault for not expanding <clears throat> your all's 
appreciation of the work we've done at the Ghent Task Force and the representation that the Ghent Neighborhood League has for that corridor on the 21st Street, the work that we have done for many, many months to make that an area that people want to come and visit, an area that has some permanency to it, an area that, um, although it supports private businesses, it is not a place that uh, we encourage the type of uh, business or retail of a convenience store. I don't think anybody can make or can convince me that adding another 7-Eleven brings new business into Ghent. It only makes somebody that goes to another 7-Eleven go to this one. So I, I'd be hard pressed to understand that argument. I support Mr. Snyder. I'm disappointed that he didn't choose perhaps another business. Uh, we need to make plans in our city that will ensure that in 30 years we are proud of what we have planned for this city. This is about planning. This isn't about the next bottom line. And I, I am disappointed that uh, I have not been able to make that point uh, with my fellow councilmen. I vote no. Ms. Williams? I do vote aye, but I just would like to say to Mr. Snyder, we've bought several really nice hats over the years from your store, and I'm glad that you're actually going to stay in business along with the 7-Eleven. Mr. Wynn? Yeah, I, I'm disappointed. I, you know, I think we're hiding behind this corporate veil that we couldn't do something if obviously you're going to pass, and I'm, I'm happy that it worked out for Mr. Snyder, but I'm disappointed we couldn't do something more substantive to build up our neighborhood and if it's about you heard it and you continue to hear about the single serve issue and I guess the corporate whatever corporate veil uh, it, it disappoints me because it's a huge issue we have a huge issue with homeless and we've worked hard on our task force and uh, and I, you know as I as I share Terry's sentiments um, uh, I do I am happy for the Snyder family but I, I vote no mr. frame aye Seven A, Mr. President. It's an ordinance granting a special exception to permit a retail goods establishment to operate after midnight on property located at 100 West 21st Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protogiru. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Webley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. And 7B is an ordinance granting a pedestrian commercial overlay district development certificate to permit a convenience store at 100 West 21st Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? I'm sorry, I was confused. I was so rattled by that last vote. Obviously, I didn't support the last one either, and I don't support this one. No. I apologize. Uh, also, I thought we had the next one. Yeah, I was, I was just so rattled by the whole thing. I should have been more in, in the moment. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? No. Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay, R8, please. R8 is an ordinance accepting with appreciation a donation to the city from S.L. Nussbaum Realty, Inc. and Siemens Industry, Inc., each in the amount of $5,000 as a contribution to the opening events of the Tide Light Rail System. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, we have a number of folks who have signed up to address the council.